Google's adding AI everywhere, including inside of the Chrome browser. You can now actually create a local instance of an AI that runs without being connected to the network inside of your Chrome. So you can make AI requests inside of Chrome without having to go to any external API. It is really cool. I'll show you how to sign up for early access and how to use it in some real world situations. Let's get right into it. There's two different ways to get started using this in-browser AI. One is to do what I did, which is to fill in this form from Google that sets you up as an early developer preview of the AI. Another way is just to follow Versal's instructions that tell you exactly how to enable it in a Chrome dev build. Both of these things get you to exactly the same endpoint. I should warn you that it's a 22 gigabyte model download, so you should keep that in mind. Then on your connection speed, of course, that might take a while. Let's go take a look at the first application that we're going to build using this in-browser AI. All right, in the description for this video, right down below where you'll find all the information on my themes and my fonts and everything else, you'll also find a link to this code. There are a couple of different projects in there. There is the recipe AI, which is what we're looking at right now. And there's also a code AI, which we'll look at in just a bit to show you even more of what this AI can do. So I'm in the recipe AI project right now. It's a Vite project running React 18. I'm going to use Node 22 for it. And let's just bring it up and see what it looks like. All right, what we've got here is a content site. And on, on that content site, we've got a oatmeal raisin cookie recipe. And we want people to be able to ask the AI questions about this recipe. So let's go take a look at what we've got so far. So over in the recipe.js file, inside of the project, we've got our recipe for our oatmeal raisin cookie. And then over in app, we bring in that recipe and we render it as markdown. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is try and connect to the AI. So I'm going to bring in a use effect for that. And I want our use effect to run when this component loads. So next we want to know, is the AI available? So to do that, I'm going to call window.ai. And then inside of that, can create text session. And I'll just console log that out. And let's have a look. So we bring up our console. Then we can see that we get back a promise. So let's await that promise. And of course, we can't use await since we're not in an asynchronous function. So let's create one of those. All right, what's it say? All right, now that promise from can create text session has resolved to give us readily, meaning that our AI is readily available to take prompts. Now, there are a couple of other things that can come out of there, including no and after loading, but readily is what we're looking for. Although in this case, we will take anything other than no. So we're going to want to look to see what the value coming back is. And if we can create a session, let's go and create a session and do a prompt. So we'll take this available and we'll see if we're not no. Then first we'll create a session. To do that, we'll await AI create text session, and then we will prompt it and see what we get back. So we'll prompt it to say hello, and we get back, hello there, as an AI language model, I'm here to assist you. Now we do, in this process, get some spurious generic failures. This is really early days for this AI. I would not put it into production today. It's just something that we can play around with to see the potential of what AI is going to look like locally right here. But there you go. We're calling out the AI. So now that we know this works, let's make it practical. Let's connect it to this recipe and start being able to ask this AI questions about this recipe. To do that, the first thing we need to do is create a reference to that session and hold it. So we'll use use ref for that. So we'll create a session ref. And then we'll set its current to this session. Now, I also want to make sure that we don't do this twice. So I'm going to go check to make sure that we aren't already set. OK, the next thing we need to do is create an input field where folks can actually like type in their question. So to track that, we need a use state. We'll call that question. Let's go create an input control. So this will just be a controlled input of type text. Let's take a look at it in the browser. And yeah, there you go. Looks good. Looks a good start. So now when you type in a query, if we hit return, then we'll want to go and send that to the AI. So let's set up an on key up, call it run query. It's going to take an event and we're going to be looking for the enter key. And then if we have a 
current session. We'll then engineer ourselves a prompt that we'll then send to the AI. And that prompt has everything it needs to know to answer this question. So what it, we want in terms of a response, the recipe for context, and then the question. Next, we'll call the prompt method on that session and we'll get back the response. Of course, we need to await that, but we're not an async function, so let's fix that. All right, looks good. And let's take a look at what we get back. And let's try it out. So bring up the console again. Are these cookies good for me? All right. And we get back that oatmeal raisin cookies contain 10 grams of total fat. And it was just that fast. Pretty cool, right? Now let's go take a look at that API for a second. Now a couple things to note here. First, we're not sending an array of objects like we do with, say, the OpenAI API, where you go and have a set of objects that contain a role and a message. We're just giving it a straight string prompt like this. And in fact, even though we say we have a session, none of the session data is stored between each prompt. So we really don't have a fully running session here. If you have a history of questions, you actually have to just keep combining them into the prompt and there is a token limit on the prompt. So I would say this is a little bit limited in terms of its use case in comparison to other APIs, but it's also really easy to use. So if you wanna start getting into AI, I think this is a really good starting point. The other thing to notice is we're not getting back a stream of responses like we do with other AIs, but we can actually get that. To get that, instead of prompt, we use prompt streaming and we get back a stream. And with that stream, we can use the awesome for await to get chunks from that stream. Let's go take a look at what we get back from that. So let's try this again. And now we can see that we get a stream of building responses. Now in the documentation, they do say that this format is going to change. This is what we currently have. So to put this actually into the page, we need some more state to store that. So at the top, I'm gonna to create a new piece of state called query result. Let's go and set our query result to that chunk. And then down below our input, we'll use markdown again because the, mar the values do come back as markdown. So let's hit save and see how we go. So I'm ask a more complex question here. Can I use whole wheat flour instead of all-purpose flour? Apparently you can according to this AI, but the cookies won't turn out as chewy. Let's go fix our formatting a little bit. Now I do want to have a full conversation with this, including history. So let's go and implement on that. So I'll create a new piece of state called history. And then down in my run query, we want to hold the complete response. So let's set that to response. And then when I'm done, I'm going to reset that query result and then set the history. Now that we've got our history, let's bring it back into the prompt by just adding it into the prompt. Here's the previous questions and your responses. But of course, we also want to render what the history was so that I know what my conversation looks like. Let's bring that into our div. We'll just map through our history and then put that out. And let's give it a try. Are these good for me? Okay, they're healthy. No, I mean really healthy. Oh, okay, you bet. All right, well, Gemini seems very adamant that these oatmeal raisin cookies are very healthy for me. I'm not sure what it's on, but okay, anyway. One more thing to do before we are finished with this. I'm gonna just go and set the current question to an empty string once you ask it. And I think that actually completes this very nicely. Let's try it out one more time. I'll ask about flour and yeah, there you go. Looks good. All right, well, it looks like Gemini is really good at understanding human things like oatmeal raisin cookies. Is it as good with looking at code? Can we upgrade our code documentation to have AI functionality inside of it that's local? Let's find out. So in that same project, there's also code AI. Let's go take a look at that. This is essentially exactly the same project, but we use code instead of an oatmeal raisin cookie. Let's bring it up and see what it looks like. So now we've got a SQL create table function in our documentation. It creates a table for recipes. Let's see if we can rewrite this code so that it stores chat messages instead of recipes. And it, yes, we can. It does a really good job with that. I haven't tested the limits of the Gemini AI. I don't know which language it supports or any of that, but I think actually this is really cool and it would be a really interesting thing to see integrated into documentation. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at this Gemini AI that's built into Google Chrome now. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comments section right down below. And if you're into advanced topics like this, be sure to check out my upcoming course, 
Pro, NextJS.dev. We are in the final stages of getting all of that content ready right now, but there are two free tutorials available for you if you just sign up for the newsletters. The tutorials are on state management and forms management in Next.js App Router. There's nothing like it out there. Dig in and enjoy. It's free. Of course, in the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, click on the subscribe button and hit that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.